trip to Denver. For those of you who don't know, I did a show with Craftsy Unlimited and it will probably be coming out in the spring. I don't have a definite date yet and I can't say the title of my show yet, but I spent a wonderful glorious week in Denver shooting a five episode program for Craftsy Unlimited and I just cannot wait to share with you all the details. But I had just a couple of spare moments to myself and one of those I chose to spend at Fancy Tiger Crafts. Of course I had to go. So this is my haul video of Fancy Tiger Crafts. Here's my bag, first of all. I actually don't even know if I remember what's in here. I haven't opened this. So I left it in Denver and they, uh, the Craftsy folks had to ship a bunch of my stuff back and they shipped this back for me too. So I don't even remember what I bought. So this will be fun for me too. Okay, first of all, I got this Make Me a Sweater cross stitch um, little wooden bear. I thought this would be fun to do with one of my daughters because um, especially my five-year-old she's very interested in, in knitting and yarn and likes to touch it and feel it and I thought you know maybe one day I could let her just sort of choose whatever yarn she wants to choose and we could make this bear a sweater. So I thought this was a wonderful way to include my children into the yarn craft that I love so much. She, All of my kids tease me they're like oh yeah mom's knitting. <laughs> and uh, I want her to feel like she can be more part of it, you know what I mean? So I've been eyeing, oh I got a couple other little swag items. So uh, one is this Fancy Tiger Crafts project bag. Oops, isn't that cute? You know, I have a lot of project bags, but I thought, hmm, that's a nice souvenir. And then they just gifted me that pin. Though I also bought a bunch of those pins to uh, trade at EYF because I think they're so cute. And I think they have a wonderful online presence, um, Fancy Tiger Crafts, and people might know them. I also got the Crafting Merit Badge, the Knitting Crafting Merit Badge. They have a bunch of different merit badges for all the different crafts there. They're very sweet. And then I got a Made by Unicorns tag. So I need to find a very special project to put that on the inside of. Is that a proper sentence? <laughs> I have been eyeing their yarn since my first TNNA. I've only been to a few TNNAs, but I remember that first TNNA. I was like, mmm, that heirloom. I love the look of that yarn. I'm not going to commit right now to this being my Rhinebeck sweater, but it's definitely a contender, especially because the pattern I want to make with this yarn is in the Rhinebeck sweater book, which I got at Nancy Tiger Crafts. So the Rhinebeck sweater, I, I know some of you are a little confused. Like, what is she talking about? Tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater, but this is it. 12 projects by Isolde and Friends inspired by the Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival. It's technically the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, but uh, we have come, our snitters have come to call it the Rhinebeck uh, just Rhinebeck, we just call it Rhinebeck. Uh, so, the sweater I was looking at is Jenny at the Fair. What's interesting about this is it looks like they actually took the photos at Rhinebeck. So, what I'm wondering is how much foresight they needed to make this book. Because it seems like they would have needed to make all the things in order to have them ready to shoot at one of the Sheep and Wolves, and then they would have had to publish it after. So, there it is, Jenny at the Fair. It's by Mary Jane Mucklestone. Isn't that cute? It's a cardigan. I hope it's a steak. I'm guessing it is. A steak, let's see. Because I steak now. Oh look, here's a, here's the Starcraft fiber mill. Remember we met her at Vogue 99? Anyway, I'm getting distracted. So let me just show you the yarn. <laughs> let me show you the yarn. Obviously I need to page through that book. So the base is going to be, oh that's surprising, it's going to be pink. So this is the uh, Heirloom 100% American Rami. This is super sticky. It's worsted. And let's see if I can tell you anything else about it. Rami sheep, descendants of English medieval long wool breeds, produce an abundance of lustrous wool. This hard working wool has a long staple length which means it is perfect for sturdy mittens and other items that need to wear well. This heirloom wool will look great for years to come. This color is called Zero One Cabbage. I guess I understand the, why it's called cabbage. I've seen some cabbage with those colors. So the base is going to be this beautiful cabbage. 
color. So good. And then there's color work at the bottom, and so I was sort of playing around with different colors. So I, I picked up one of these. This is Well Water. This is Nettles. This is Elderberry. It's kind of dark gray. And then, finally, uh, Golden Beet. So I think the idea with the color work is that each one kind of pairs up at some point. So like these two together, these two together, these two together, you know, probably this combination, maybe this, maybe this. So I think between the four of them, it's going to be some really fun color work there at the bottom of the sweater. I wonder if it's bottom up. Oh, I need to read more. So these four, it smells so sheepy and it's just so cushy. So this is a sweater. This is my sweater from Fancy Tiger. Oh, I just am so excited about it. I really am because I've been eyeing this yarn for so long and it just felt right to buy it while I was there in Denver. You know, I was, I was able to stop in and knit with the other crafters. They have craft night on, I think it's Tuesday nights. So I knit at the table for a while and got to know some of the crafters there and just felt so happy leaving with a sweater's quantity of fancy tiger craft. Whoa, the heirloom. The heirloom, they just call it heirloom. The heirloom worsted. I was just, I was so happy. So I feel like it's gonna be a special sweater regardless of where it turns up because it just was a full circle moment for me going to Denver. I mean, not that I was, not full circle, it's not that I was trying to be on Craftsy, but it just was like a very validating trip for me. And then to go to Fancy Tiger, which I've really been, I've had my eye on Fancy Tiger for a long time, was just so awesome. That's my Fancy Tiger Crafts haul. I hope you liked it. I'll, um, I'll definitely be going back there again if I head to Denver again. I also need to hit some other places. Actually, before I go, I wanted to tell you about a store that's on the same street as Fancy Tiger. If you just walk, I guess, I don't know if it's north or south. I really don't know. But if you exit Fancy Tiger and turn right up the street, on the across the street there is a place called Sewn and it is a store full of handmade items and I did a little tour around just with a little just a little video so I'll show that to you here The owner is really lovely. She said there's, I think, over 35 artists who contribute to the stock of the store. And there wasn't like a ton of knitting, but there was a little bit, or it seemed like there were some repurposed knits, like maybe people had gone vintage shopping and added their little special flair to the knit. Maybe it was originally hand knit a long time ago, or maybe it was machine knit, but there's just definitely a lot of like crafty, homemade goodness there at Sewn. So if you are in the Denver area and you go to Fancy Tiger Crafts, I also encourage you to head over to Sewn. And then the next time I'm there, I guess I need to check out some more uh, yarn stores. I heard there's a great one called Colorful Yarn, so I need to put that on my itinerary if I have a chance to go back to Denver, which I hope I do. So thank you so much, as always, for checking into Christy Glass Knits, and I'll see you next time. Bye!